I'll explain the Mario thing a little bit later in the video, but here we are today. Wahoo finally announcing the Rival, their multi-sport watch, focusing on swim, bike, and run. Now the hero feature of this watch is what's called a touchless transition feature. So this watch will detect when you are swimming, it'll detect when you're in transition, when you are riding, and then when you are running, allowing people to focus on the effort rather than recording their effort. You've seen in cycle races and running and everything, people always diving for their watches or head units and not focusing on what they're doing. The main feature of this device is that you don't need to do that. Now the only thing I do resembling swimming at the moment is washing my son in the bath. And the only running that I'm doing is chasing him down the hallway after that bath, trying to dry him. So my early look at the Rival watch here is purely from a cycling perspective. I'll leave it to two of the best in the business when it comes to wearable reviews, DC Runmaker and Desfit to get you across everything else on the run and the swim. A quick overview of the feature sets on the Rival watch and starting off with number one there, as mentioned before, the touchless transition where it knows what activity you are doing. Multi-sport handover if you have a compatible element head unit on the bike for the bike leg, those two things will talk together. Perfect view zoom if you're familiar with the element units, you can zoom in and out the data fields on the watch, so up to six that you can set within the cycling. Workout editor within the companion app, which is quite interesting, you can line your times up for your event with the official times before it gets uploaded. The watch will track your heart rate 24 seven, track your steps and work out calories. Kicker control, if you're an indoor cyclist, broadcast heart rate, neither Bluetooth or Amp Plus. So if you're doing a Zwift session or a Sufferfest or a train road, you can use this as your heart rate to broadcast in both those protocols. Live track, which comes with all the elements as we know, smart notifications and timer and stopwatch. The connected sensor list at the moment is a little thin on the ground from a cycling point of view. Now, the reason why I say that is there's no DI2, there's no ETAP integration, and there's no Varia radar support. I suspect they're coming in the future to the watch, but for now, it's heart rate, power meter, speed, and cadence sensors only. There's swim metrics, if you're into swimming, pool lap recognition, customizable pool size, running dynamics, if you have an external heart rate monitor, such as the Ticker X with the accelerometers in that, light and dark mode, automatic, pause workouts, and heart rate zones listed. Onto the hardware features of the watch, just before we get into the box and have a look at it closely, ceramic bezel, ambient light sensor, barometric altimeter, optical heart rate sensor with two green LEDs on the back, 64 color, 240 by 240 screen, battery life, uh, 14 days in smartwatch mode or 24 hours in GPS record mode. Gorilla glass on the front, Bluetooth and Amp Plus sensor connectivity, replaceable bands, and waterproof to five atmospheres. And the most important part, price listed as 379 US. Always one of my favorite parts of the day, and that's an unboxing. Having a look at what's included with the rival. Optical sensor protector that comes off. And, oh, everyone loves that. Very comprehensive quick start guide of how to get things up and running from Wahoo. We'll put that aside for now and have a look at this charger. Now it's not just a straight cable charger, it's a clip-on pod, very similar to the charger that Ray informed us all of for Garmin units about this time last year. So the unit clips on there to the rival, and away it goes. The spec sheet lists this watch as 53 grams, we'll be putting that to the test. Oh, spot on, 53 grams for the watch. All right, time to get this turned on and paired up. We'll see how easy this process is. QR code pairing and done. That easy. Okay, going through the onboarding process here. Showing us how to use the watch. Always a strong feature of the Wahoo products of recent times is the digital onboarding process. Okay, steps us through everything we need to know. And here we go with 22% battery already. So we can change a few of the things here, the colors of the accent of the watch and different watch faces.
we can manage some of the widgets here, set a few of the metrics if we want to track those. Okay, authorizing Apple Health to track all my metrics. We'll hit OK on that and allow, and we are done. Okay, scrolling down here through a few other options, sensors, alerts, live track, auto upload to our authorized sites. It's all very familiar if you've used an element before. Now, as I won't be doing any other of these, we're going to go and delete all these activity profiles. Uh, we'll leave kicker, we'll leave cycling, we'll get rid of all the rest, lap swimming gone, treadmill gone, and running, away you go. Okay, we're good. We have a cycling watch. <laughs> One thing I do have to mention is the tutorials within the app are fantastic, just like the onboarding for the kicker bike. The watch has a number of tutorials which you can scroll through and learn all about the features and how to do everything. So again, another strong point for the Wahoo ecosystem is the help guides they have within their app. So absolutely brilliant to see this provided within the app. You don't have to search the website or hunt things down. The information's right there within the app if you want to learn more about the watch and how it all works. Okay, now I'm up to speed with how it all works. It's time to get this unit up to speed, so to speak, out on the road. And for this ride, I'm taking out the Bolt, the Roam, the Element, and the Mini, and the Rival. And away we go. One of the issues that I encountered early on with this unit, and it could be firmware related, was that it was unable to find the power to max power meter on the bike. The other Element units did, the rival was unable to find it out on the road. Later on, I paired to the Vector 3s and that was okay, but something was up with the pairing to the Power to Max for this ride in particular. It wasn't the only problem I encountered. Once I stopped everything here, 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 and here, the poor element mini just didn't work at all. Not to worry, that's end of life, so we can forget about the element mini. But the rival, there we go, saving data, summary page up, and good to go. Okay, so here we are on my favorite website on the internet to have a look at the data from that ride, the rival versus all of the other GPS elements. Now, because the power meter didn't pair correctly, I'll skip over that for now, but the data recording once I did pair this to the uh, other power meter on the bike, that was all okay. Let's have a look at the heart rate though. That's one of the main features of this unit here. I never have much luck with wrist-based optical heart rates. Uh, further up the arm with the ticker fit, that's fine, and the OH1 from Polar, that's all good. Obviously the ticker X, and the ticker heart rate straps that I have on, or any chest strap works well for me, but on the wrist, never much luck, and it's kind of what's happened here. You can see a little laggy early on in the green, not detecting correctly, up against the ticker X, a little bit of lag through here and coming down. We have a good section through here, not so good here, and near the end there, it's about a 50-50 success rate. It trends okay, but not quite accurate. I find that the hotter and sweatier I get, obviously the better contact it has, the more accurate it gets. But that was a bit of a cold day, but uh, yeah, a bit of give and take there with the heart rate success for that ride early on. Scrolling down, let's have a look at the speed here. Everything looks pretty good there. Through some trees, um, yeah, pretty much one for one there. The bolt itself had a bit of a spike here, but look, that looks pretty normal for speed tracking. As such, distance tracking, all looks good to me. Elevation, the arrival, we'll start it off a little lower. Other than that though, it trends okay. Still a little different though from the other three units on the bike. Remembering the Mini sort of didn't work at all. That is end of life too, the Mini doesn't exist anymore, so no worries there. Now down to the GPS tracking data as the overlay compared to the others. Now, short little ride here through some hills, but through town, it's probably a neater place to look through. And we can see there the rival just overshoots a little bit. So just in the corners there, in the corners there. The others are okay and track very, very well. Um, but just overshoots there. So there really isn't much in it. Didn't put me in the lake there, but it was uh, a little further out. So the GPS data coming from the rival is probably a little unsmooth. It isn't really on track with the other three that were on the bike. It was very, very close. Close enough to give a pass mark for sure. And tracked overall distance just fine. But you can see here, it's just a little different to the others. There's the green in the middle through there. So maybe a little refinement to be done on the GPS side of things, but still very close. 
Onto today's data set, which was around 80 minutes or 42 kilometers of riding outdoors with the Rival up against the Element Rome. The Rival did not detect the power meter on the bike till around half an hour into the ride. Now I'm gonna give it a leave pass on this because as soon as I opened the Element app, it told me there was a firmware update already for the watch. So things are in rapid development for the watch. However, when it did detect the power meter on the bike, uh, let's dive in here and have a look at the sensor recording quality. Uh, 228 versus 228, recording from the same power meter. So the recording of the data, that's A-OK -okay once it detects the sensor. Whilst diving into these FIT files and comparing the data between the bike computers and the Rival, I did note the Rival records sensors a little bit differently. It kind of bundles them all up into one and just calls them the Rival. Now I did bring this up with Wahoo, they are aware of that, that's by design for now, that may change in the future. Onto the heart rate data for this ride and a lot more success today, whether it was the conditions, humidity, my arm, I'm not quite sure. The purple there is the ticker X on the Rome and the green being the rival. Things looking pretty good. There's a few dips that uh, the two didn't agree with, but overall 145 versus 145, that's not too bad for the optical heart rate sensor on this thing with that ride. Speed data with two independent sources recorded, 31.65 versus 31.63. That's pretty close if you ask me. Elevation data looks good, although there's an offset there where they both started. So they track well, um, they both start and finish with about a 10 meter offset. So overall meters descended and ascended will be equal. Onto the GPS data, and I really didn't stress the GPS too much at all. It's quite a straight ride, this one. Diving into the corner here, I suspect the, uh, based on the data we saw in the other one, the rival will be a little bit longer to turn the corner. And that's what we're seeing there. So the Rome is a little tighter to the road on that corner there. And the other feature of this ride that I went on was another left-hand corner. So we'll dive into that. And I suspect the rival is going to be a little bit laggier in taking that corner. And it is just by a few meters. Look, plus or minus the GPS uh, margin of error. That's not too bad, but you can see that it doesn't track exactly one for one with the roam. So there's the data and me nitpicking a bit of GPS accuracy there. Not much in it at all. And I suspect with future updates, remembering this is on an earlier firmware than even today, that should really tighten down. So onto my pros and cons with the watch. Well, like the Element bike computers, the ease of use, press and go, press and stop, things are synced, it just works. That's been great. The perfect view zoom with up to six data fields, a little hard to change while riding, but you can get the data that you need on screen. It is possible. Uh, the live track with the Element app, it's already built in. Anything with the ecosystem with the syncing to third parties is all there within the Element app, so that's all good. The heart rate rebroadcast is great indoors. If you're using Zwift on an iPad or an iPhone or Apple TV, you can rebroadcast your heart rate over Bluetooth for that. And for the day-to-day -day usage of this watch, you'll be glad to know there is a Llama emoji. What more do we need? Onto my cons and this list, well, take it with a grain of salt because there's already been a firmware update since making this list. So the GPS data, not as smooth as the Element Bike computers. The heart rate data, well, it might be just me. Let me know your luck with heart rate sensors on the wrist, but as you saw with the data, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Not as good as a heart rate strap around the chest. Uh, from a cyclist point of view, the sensor pairing is a little bit too limited. No Shimano DI2, no SRAM ETAP integration. As I said earlier on, I'd like that just for the low battery warning indication. Ant Plus radar support is a must for me for any cycling device. Fair enough, this is focused on swim, bike and run and a competitive triathlete. However, for training, Ant Plus radar support is a must have. Uh, and also the way in which the rival records sensor data is a little different, as I said before. It's more of a technical detail that I won't dive into too much now. That may change in the near future though. And uh, no mapping or navigation on this unit. So if you get lost, you're gonna have to find your own way home. If history is anything to go by with Wahoo, I suspect we'll see a lot of feature set updates for the rival in the first six to 12 months. As was the case with the original Element when that first rolled out and the Element Roam with its navigation updates soon after release. So with the launch of the Rival today, Wahoo entered the wearables market, a very, very tough space to be in. They're going up against competitors who have been around for years and years and years and almost generations. How this thing goes, well, I guess we have to wait and see. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. And the Mario thing, that was in the developer menu on the firmware that I had. It tested the speaker.